Watch Talk Heathen Live Sundays at 1 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTH and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TH. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very, very special episode of Truth Wanted. I am one of three hosts today, Objectively Dan, and joining me from other parts of the world are Puck and Aaron, my lovely co-hosts, because today is something special. Today is Halloween night. If you notice, this isn't a Friday night like we usually do. This is a Sunday night. And if you'll also notice, I'm not recording from my apartment, folks. We are live at the Driscoll Hotel, allegedly the most haunted hotel in the state of Texas, maybe in the whole country. We're going to find out tonight. I want to give, of course, a special welcome to my co-hosts tonight, Aaron and Puck. Aaron and Puck, welcome to Truth Wanted. This is awesome. The three of us finally together doing a show at the same time. <laughs> I'm so yes, happy. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be very, very special. So as you can see, uh, and they might have switched some shots already, I'm getting some audio feedback from the crew live as we're doing this. I have at least three different cameras set up at different parts of this hotel room, and I've got a mobile camera right here. So if we see some ghost action tonight, it's going to be happening here. And I have a feeling we have some surprises that are going to be in for, in store for us here. But we are in room 525, which is allegedly the most haunted room in the hotel. So not only are we the most uh, one of the most haunted hotels, we're in the most haunted room in the hotel. So we're doing the, the real deal here, folks. Um, we are going to be taking your calls tonight, but we're also doing something especially special. We are going to be using this spirit board to try to communicate with the dead now aaron and puck are going to be helping me by reading off the super chats that you guys re uh give to us tonight so if you decide to donate believe twenty dollars or more tonight for your super chats you can ask us a question that we will ask live on the spirit board here and we're going to switch to a shot here where you can see the spirit board this is no ordinary spirit board this is a custom board that was made by our executive producer greg here just for tonight and it's really really cool we've got all of the show logos on here and the truth wanted logo right there at the top with a special little uh planchette here of a cool design again all custom made just for tonight so we're going to be in for a spook tacular time it's going to be super super cool so uh guys are you ready for tonight i have no idea what to expect so i don't even know what be ready for tonight means i'm i i'm here i trust in us and the crew to to keep things going we're we got this we we are we got this yeah I, i'm I good i'm a little bit i'm a little bit afraid i'm like all alone in a basement right now it's dark and i'm just i'm i i'm not afraid but I get startled easily, so I'm gonna try my best not Aaron, to like. Scream. You're in your house. I'm in a I'm in a haunted <laughs> hotel room right now. I'm what are you talking basement. about? If anything, I, I get it. But if anything, I'm the one that should be. I've got the spirit board. If I'm messing with some <laughs> bad stuff and it's live on camera, so people are gonna watch it happen. So we'll see what happens tonight. I'm not entirely Fair sure enough. what we're in for either, but I know that again, there's probably gonna be some some surprises here and there throughout tonight so guys keep a lookout for those super chats for me as they come in we will be asking them when they go through but of course folks this is still a call-in show this is still truth wanted we are live and we are still taking your calls. so we want to take some of those calls we still got a couple open lines where we want you guys to come talk but for right now i want to give you guys like a quick tour of the room if that's okay what do you think mm -hmm. crew can we do a quick tour of this room here uh, we're going to switch to this mobile phone here there we go so you should be able to see my phone we check out this little room here we've got all the lights set up 
Got the cameras up there. This is no joke. This is not CG. I am all here. We've got all these cameras set up. And we've also got this little bathroom back here. Who knows what this bathroom will have in store for us tonight. I don't know. Lots of little surprises. But anyway, yes, this is allegedly the most haunted room in the hotel. Allegedly, there were these two brides that committed suicide 20 years apart from each other. That's the, how the story goes. And apparently they both did it in that same bathtub right over there. That's the story that they tell. There's also a couple of other stories that get around. Maybe we'll get to some of them tonight. But that that's where we're looking at tonight, folks. That's where we are doing this show. So what do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? This, this is awesome. I've, I've never seen anything like this. I've never been a part of anything like this. I am, I am, I am, I'm honored just to be here. So we'll see what we got. Yeah. Don't, don't go yeah. decide to have a bath halfway through this, Dan. I'm scared for you. I, listen, <laughs> that's, that's patrons only right there, the bath. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. If depends any spooky stuff people happens, donate. <laughs> depends on how much people donate. And if, and if, and if there's any spooky stuff happening on these cameras tonight, you guys have to tell me, okay? Because uh, I'm in here by myself and, and chat. You guys have to point it out too, because like you know, we'll 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 have it all recorded so we can go back analyze the footage like ghost hunter style. It's going to be a whole thing. Um, so I'm excited for tonight. While we're waiting again for the super chats to ask our awesome spirit board some questions, let's go ahead and take some calls if you guys are ready. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's do it. All right, we've got a, a couple of calls here. Um, let's talk to, uh, I think it's Connell. Connell is calling in from Florida. Connell, you are live on our Halloween episode of Truth Wanted. How's it going? Doing well. How are you? Doing good. Glad we got to connect with you here. You are you are of the land of the living currently. You, we are not contacting you from the dead. We might contact some spirits with it, but I'm glad you're here in the world of the living with us. What's going on tonight? So am I. All right. Um, well, uh, I think I should preface this by saying that I, um, I was I called, uh, you know, the AD experience live right before this, and um, I guess they were just too full for this question. Um, so I've never. I'm not too familiar with Truth Wanted, but they were the ones that uh, referred me to you guys. So uh, I'll just uh, tell you what I, t what I was going to tell them, which is uh, okay. my, I'm an atheist. Um, my father is a devout Irish Catholic, and he does not have long to live. Um, and uh, he's never picked up on the quote-unquote warning signs i'm pretty sure my mom's figured it out by now that i'm atheist uh but uh yeah i don't, I don't think i think he's either in, in denial or just doesn't know and it would break his heart in uh figuratively and uh possibly literally because um it would upset him tremendously and uh to the point where it would uh affect his health i think and i don't know I feel that the um, conversation about faith and afterlife possibly is inevitable, and I'm not going to bring it up. And, but if he does, and he asks me a direct question, uh, I'm, I have a very hard time lying to anybody, never mind my father. But I would, you know, what if he were to ask me, you know, Connell, what, what do you think heaven is going to be like for me? I'm like, shit. I mean, that's tough. Mm. It, that is tough. Yeah. That is tough. And and uh, Carl, I want to. I can relate to you personally on this. I had a family member pass away just a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, you know, I I kind of have this kind of I don't want to say tap dance, but that's kind of what it is around family because you know, death is a is a hard thing to deal with, whether you're an atheist or you're a Christian. Right. Like that's just it's a thing that's not great. It, it sucks for everybody involved. And um, it's even harder when you have different ideas of like what happens afterwards. Right. And, and atheism in itself has no like preference of ethics. 
on how to handle a situation like this, right? There's no book that's going to tell you, okay, here's how you talk to somebody about this. You kind of have to figure out what's going to be best for your own personal situation. So I, I can tell you how I handled it for myself. It's I kept my mouth shut about it until somebody really wanted to know what I thought about it. Because otherwise, it, I, I didn't feel like I was going to do much for, the, for, for, for my family and the folks around me that were grieving, right? right. People are already going to have some of those beliefs. And yeah, you just kind of have to like, in, in situations like this, I'm okay with them working through their grief in their own ways. And that's just me. That's just me. Other people might feel differently about it. Now, I'm not going to lie to somebody and say, yeah, I think this person's in heaven right now. If somebody told me, hey, can you talk about how great this person was and how they're in heaven? I'm not going to do that because that's going to go against my own sense of what I believe is true. But if they asked me if I could talk about this person and what they were like in life, I would be happy to do that. And I think that's what the kind of the grieving and memorial process should be in my view, right? It should be talking about how that person lived and, and how you can best celebrate that. But other people are obviously going to feel differently about it. So you don't want to compromise your sense of self just because there's pressure from other people around you who feel differently. I don't believe you should do that. But no. it doesn't help to read the, you know, it, it can help to read the room sometimes too, right? It, it's pretty difficult. Let, let me interrupt you. Um, I, I wasn't mm -hmm. speaking of relatives and whatnot. I was talking about my dad mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. now and when he died. Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, I, I already know that I can't look at him in the eye and be like, hey, dad, I'm an atheist considering, yeah. you know, uh, considering what it, it put, could potentially do to him um, at this stage. So um, I guess maybe I'm looking for advice as, uh, you know. Um, um, what, what, how, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of telling him of of of, of letting him know that this is something because like 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 for me i i know what the benefit was for me for telling people this it's because i want people to know this is who i am I think, and i feel like this is this is a part of me is that is that what this is for you do you just want him to know like th this is just who you are or or, or yeah. what's the benefit of telling him that uh, no um none it, none it's, it's it's more of a it, it's just difficult for me to to lie especially to him um you know, I really, I really have a very different, you know, I, I've made a promise to myself a long time ago that I would not lie uh, anymore. Well, I, um, is it, is it lying to say that you're not sure if, is it lying to say that you're not sure that there's an afterlife? I mean, it, I it, is, is that kind of softer language better? Like, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah, to, to answer your question, no, is it, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I think, I think really what I'm looking for is, is more of uh, how to, tell, you know, how to uh, approach it. Uh, not, not whether I'm going to, you know, come mm -hmm. out as an atheist or not, you know, how, how, how to, you know, uh, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give my piece on it. And then I, I want to give Puck and Aaron the chance to talk on this, but yeah, like I, I, I think it's totally okay to be in the realm of focusing on yourself and, and your personal views of it rather than make like deliberate statements of fact about everybody. Like, yeah, we're all not going to go anywhere, dad. Like, this is it. This is all we have. You know, you just have to accept that versus saying like, well, I'm just not sure about an afterlife. I'm open to other ideas yeah. about that, but I can't say one way or another. I, I, I think that's one an honest way to approach it still where you're not completely denying somebody's worldview, but like said, instead just giving yourself a yeah. chance to express how you feel because everybody has a right to express how they feel about stuff like this. Right. I, I think yeah. everybody could, you know, has a right to that, but also like it, it gives you a chance to kind of be honest and, and have that conversation. You know, like I, I think, um, you know, I, I can't tell you what your dad is like, but I think most parents would rather want to ha at least have that conversation with their kids and 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 you know at least have the opportunity for that rather than uh be afraid to talk about it in the first place because i know that with my parents personally they didn't like the fact that i hid it from them for a long time they didn't understand how painful it was for me to hide that um I, and i wish i could have came out a little bit more gradually so maybe this is an opportunity to kind of give things out more gradually you know by just approaching it this this single topic but it, it's definitely complicated anyway i want to give puck and aaron a chance to respond well, I appreciate your time. Mm 
Puck, Air, do you guys have anything oh. to say? If you guys are talking, I can't hear yes. you right okay. now. There you go. So um, uh, my views on like kind of end of life care are a little bit, a little bit maybe different than other people would like the at that moment when someone you love is going through that I think that the most important thing is to think about um like the harm and benefit of it all I I personally I feel like I wouldn't probably bring something like that up um in that phase like near the end there when really it's just all about comfort and family yep. and all of those kind of things. Like I, I know, I totally get that there's like this desire yep. to be authentic to, especially your parent. Um, of course you want them to know you for who you really are and where you stand on positions. But I think that uh, when it comes to end of care or end of life care, I think that we're kind of looking fight. at harm, at harm reduction here. And I think you had yeah. mentioned that like it could break right. their heart, both kind of, metaphorically and possibly physically so i i would i would just err on the side of caution about um easing you know the discomfort that that person is feeling near the end of their life um i would i would maybe worry less about uh, making sure that they knew exactly where i stood on things and or even the opportunity for them to maybe like have any self-reflection or introspection about their own beliefs i think it's maybe not the appropriate time for that that's kind of where i stand on that I, I agree. Uh, I agree uh, completely. Yeah, I think. I think. Like I said, I think more. What I'm looking for is is maybe. Um, and, and I love. I love the uh, the um, advice. Um, the gentleman. I, I'm sorry. I don't know his name. That I just spoke to gave me about. You know, just. Um, uh, just you know, choosing my words carefully and not. Mm -hmm. uh, not you know. Not. You know. Not lot. You know. Just comforting him and, and, you know, saying that, you know, I'm not for something like that, but no, I agree a hundred percent that, that, that there would be no benefit whatsoever for me. Yeah. You can take a little bit more of an ambiguous own. stance on it. If, if someone were to ask Absolutely. you like mm -hmm. a direct question, like, especially in that scenario, I think it, it would be advisable to just keep it a little bit more ambiguous and to say like, I don't, you know, I, I thought about this too. And what I would say, and I think I would just keep it in kind of like that, you know, we no one really knows and I'm really glad that you have your your hopes for like what happens afterwards and maybe I even to comfort them I would even say like I hope you're right but um I, I don't think that it's the same yeah. scenario as as a regular day-to-day -day interaction that you would have with somebody who asks you point blank what your beliefs are I I really do take the view of kind yeah. of like the harm reduction especially when someone's going through that it's it's really hard to um yeah. I mean, end of life stuff is tricky and it's, it's all about kind of being there to comfort and re remembering your family and the good times. It's kind of a, not an opportune moment to talk about, uh, like, you know, having valid true beliefs. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And like yeah. in, in, in a, at a certain point, you know, like I've been in a similar situation before where, um, someone was concerned about, um, my, you know, my atheism, because unlike you, I've been out for quite some time. Almost all of my family knows, my friends know. So for me, it's, it, you know, my family is not quite a shock, but there yeah. was a time when it was. And I remember one of the things I said was, if there is a God and there is a good God, they will know that I dedicated my life to trying to be as nice and kind to people as possible. And that I am genuinely, exactly. honestly, and earnestly searching. And yeah. that I still have plenty of time to go. And there's no way I can know what's going to happen in the future. But if there is a good God, then a good God would know what to do. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's me and not everybody would do it that way. But like I said, I mean, there's comes a certain time where it's not so much about representing who I am, but about making sure uh, yeah. whoever it is, is comfortable. Well, that's, I use that argument often. Um, but yeah. All right. Great. Thanks guys. I don't want to take up too much of uh, other call times. Um, I appreciate you and, thinking uh, about us though, Connell. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Connell. Thanks so much for, for talking with us, I, I know you probably you originally want to talk with the AXP crew, and I'm glad that you got to talk with us as well. And 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 as we're bringing in more callers, hey, welcome! If you're joining us for the first time, or atheist experience, or talk heathen, or any of our other awesome shows, uh, we don't you know usually do this kind of thing. <laughs> we're not usually in a setup like this, but hey, you should come check out Truth Wanted. We're usually live on Fridays at 7 p.m. Central, and we talk about all the other stuff that happens in skepticism. What about crystal healing? What about ghosts and aliens and zombies and all kinds of stuff? We're, we're here for that, and uh, hopefully we can talk a little bit more about that kind of stuff later on 
as uh, the night continues to uh, go with this this Halloween night as things are, are heating up here. I haven't seen any ghost activity in the room so far. I don't know. Have you guys seen anything? Has chat mentioned anything? I, I, I haven't personally, but to be honest, I don't always know what to look for. So That's this true. is a good experience for me. <laughs> That's true. What, what exactly are we looking for? Exactly, with the ghost stuff. It's like just like movement of the curtains or something. Am I supposed to hear a scream? I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I guess it could be a couple things. Dan, can you let us know if you feel like a cold breeze come in the room or like maybe the hairs on your yes. neck stand up a little bit? Like I heard a thump earlier. I'm pretty sure it's my kids upstairs, but I did feel a little bit freaked out. <laughs> okay. All right. I will let you know if there's yeah. any cold breezes. I'm in a totally yeah. closed off room here. There's like an air conditioning duct, but it's like way up there. I, I think... I should be good. Any super chats so far of folks that want to, uh, you know, talk to our spirit board here? Oh, wow. I haven't been looking at, at, at YouTube chats. So what, what, what do we got? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think we do have one um, so oh, far. Yes. Okay. Uh, from Rob Irwin for $10. Hi, Dan. Please ask the spirits if you need more than one person to work a spirit board. I are very if I need spirit board do you need more than one person do you need more than one person to work a spirit board um that is interesting I guess I have to ask the spirits <laughs> if we need more than one um so this will be cool uh, uh so I yeah uh, uh so let's let's do this let's I, I think we got the camera up set up here as you can see we got these really cool logos what we have to do is we have to put one hand here we have to put one hand here and then you put your third hand there. Oh, and then uh, that's that's how you get this the, the spirit board going. So if we ask, do we need more than one person? Uh, whoa, where are we going? Going all over the place here. Not sure. Uh, no. Turns out you don't. Turns out it could be just one person by yourself. All you need is three hands, and you should be good. So. That's what our spirit board is saying like so far. Any I, um, other human being, right? Three, it, as long as you okay. have your three hands, and you're good to go. As long as you have three hands, you're good. So that's that's fine and dandy. Um, I'm going to take my hands off the board now here. Um, but okay. yeah, looks like we got our first uh, question answered for the night. So that's uh, good thank to know. you guys. And you're thank all you guys for that. Still? Any other uh, questions? <laughs> and I'm all alone still. I'm okay. I'm in the room by myself here. Um, so yeah. Yeah, really weird. I think, I think really that's weird it for stuff now going for super on. Chats. Okay. All right. Well, if that's all it for, for super chats, um, we'll just take another call real quick as we are going on through the night. Let's see. Uh, we want to talk. Oh man, we've got we've got so many calls here. Got so many calls. Uh, we'll talk to Frank. Frank, who's calling in from Illinois. Frank, you are live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, Welcome. We can hear you just fine. Welcome to the show, Frank. How can we help? Uh, well, it was a, a spooky uh, night, so I figured I would uh, throw in something to get you guys' uh, opinion on. Uh, has, has anybody ever experienced a lucid dream? I have experienced I have. a lucid dream, um, yes, and they're very weird, but kind of cool. I can't do it on command like some people. Puck, have you? Uh, no. As much as people describe it, it as awesome as it seems like it would be, I've never experienced anything that matches those descriptions. It's possible I have and I don't remember it, or I have and I don't describe it in that way, but it's, a, it's fascinating for me to listen about, but I can't really contribute to my personal experiences with it. Okay. I can. All right. So that's two <laughs> yeah, yes, one no. Yeah. I, two I've, yes, one no. Uh, I've experienced lucid dreaming. I got really into um, how to actually train yourself to do the lucid dreaming. And for a short time, I was able to do it on command. And so I, I want to hear your stories about it. But yes, I can relate. Yes, Frank, tell okay. us about that. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, uh, giving me your opinion and, and examples on it. And uh, this, first of all, before I start with the lucid dream has have anybody experienced uh, sleep paralysis yes also yes oh my gosh <laughs> yes i okay, have it's terrible thing yes. where you're trying to wake up and you can't now my wife and i both experience this a lot more often than we would like but we we have each other there 
to wake each other up when it happens. However, um, the, for the last couple months, um, I've been taking care of my mother-in-law who is in hospice and she lives in another town and we, my wife and I have to take turns going back and forth to her house. And I have, basically I have to be, uh, uh, there for her 24 hours a day. So when she calls, I have to be able to go in there and help her. So I lay in bed, but I don't take any nighttime medications or anything. So I won't go into a deep sleep, but I found myself having one of the sleep paralysis things and I could hear myself trying to wake up and, uh, but I, I just couldn't do it. And my wife wasn't there to wake me up, but I, I stepped, st- uh, kept on trying to wake myself up. And then all of a sudden my eyes opened and I looked at the ceiling and I said, okay, where am I? Okay. I'm at my mother-in-law's house. All right. Finally, I, I woke myself up. Great. Great. Okay. So now, now that part's over. And then I got up and I said, well, I looked at the clock. I, I better go check on her. Cause I haven't heard anything from her for a while. And when I went down the hallway, there was three people in her room and I I said, what are you um, people doing here? And they were, they were from a, um, a organization that we, we do use once in a while. We pay them to come in and stay the third shift so I can get a good night's sleep. But there was three of them in there and I said, what, how did you get in here? And they said, well, the door was unlocked. And we, I said, no, I know I locked it. And then um, they said, "Um, well, still, why are you here? See, they said that um, my mother-in-law called and for me, and I didn't answer, so she called them to come help her. And I said, she can't even reach the phone. This is ridiculous. And one of the, there were two women and one guy, and one of the guys said, come on, let's go down and uh, get her meds taken care of. You'll feel better about it. You know, so we went in there into the other room, and um, he started getting stuff out of the cupboard. And said, what, are you, what are you doing? The medications are on the kitchen table. And for some reason, this not not just all the other stuff I experienced, but this one thing triggered me to set me let me go. Either you are not who you're saying you are, or I'm dreaming. And so I I basically tried to give him a bear hug to see if he was there, and poof, he just disappeared. And then so I I tried to uh, I realized okay I'm dreaming. Now I know that when I was going through the the sleep paralysis, I didn't wake up. I just went into this dream. So now my, I have to find out what's happening with my mother-in-law. And I went in to um, the room and there was a little kid in there. And I said, well, where's my mother-in-law? And he goes, this is my room. And he said, but I'll tell you what, if you follow me, I'll show you where she's at. And he walked through the wall. And I said, okay, that's another thing. I must be dreaming. So I, I was aware that I was dreaming. And I, and I kept telling myself, be prepared because you're probably going to see some crazy stuff, you know, and yeah. it would freak me out. And then I would run, I would run into uh, people in my past. Like there was this married couple that I knew years ago. And I said, Hey, am I dreaming or is this real? And the wife said, Frank, are, are you all right? What do you mean? Are you dreaming? You know? So, I mean, I had these experiences that seemed real. And then I had these other ones that were just off the wall. And then I started thinking, it, it seemed to me like this was going on forever. And I felt mm-hmm. that uh, I got to get back to my body so I could wake up. And then I had this thought in my mind, uh-oh, what if I had a heart attack and died? And my heart stopped, but my brain is still processing thoughts. And maybe I'm going to be stuck in this dream until my brain dies. And it was one of the scariest things I ever ever went through and finally yeah. I did uh, I did uh, wake up and that's where it starts it was very very detailed up to this point and then it starts getting blurry as I start coming into where I actually woke up and I mean I really I had to smack myself to make sure I was awake this time because it was the yeah. same thing I looked at the ceiling and said okay I'm here but am I really awake or what and it was, right, just, it right. was just the craziest thing yeah, sleep sleep paralysis so, is no joke. Sleep paralysis is no joke. It no. is real and it is scary. I've had a couple of sleep paralysis episodes in my life, and every single time it has not been good. That you never feel good about it. Now, I also think sleep paralysis is a great explanation for ghosts, aliens, and demons. I think that though that alone covers so many people's experiences with all three of those things and more, just because like you tend to like see things around you and stuff. 
and 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 they feel so yeah. vivid it feels so real like like how much of human history and human culture and and human religion has been founded on just people having sleep paralysis honestly like probably a lot of it right i agree with you i mean because it yeah. is so unbelievably real and people always talk you know i watch the atheist experience a lot and people are always talking about things that they've experienced well this is definitely something i've experienced but i i experienced i don't I don't um, attribute it to anything other than a dream, but because I'm an atheist too, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't believe in the afterlife either, but it's, it was just, you know, it was just so, so vivid. And my, my wife has vivid dreams all the time. Mine, I can hardly ever remember, you know, but this yeah. one was so crystal clear and went on and on, but I was, it's pretty much I was just curious. It's yeah, it's it, it is funny. Like I, I think we're probably on the same thing there, Frank, as far as, you know, what our thoughts are on it. Yeah. Like it, it probably just, it's just dreams. It explains a lot of human experiences. And it's also why when people talk about like alien abduction stories and stuff, when they say like, oh yeah, it started when they were in bed, like it was probably them having like a sleep paralysis moment. Like, I, I feel like that's yeah. an explanation for just, for just a lot of people's, you know, um, a lot of people's worldviews there, but I don't know, Aaron Puck, do you guys have extra yeah. thoughts on that? I do, uh, Frank, like the, the, your experience sounds like very familiar to things that like I have had in my own life. I, I know that those kind of things also are like a sleep, sleep paralysis and lucid dreaming also tend to be a lot more common when you're tired or you're stressed. And a lot of the lucid dreams that I used to have were often related so closely to something that was going on in my real life that it was very, very hard while I was dreaming to know what was going on. One thing that you said that I actually loved is that you actually created a test for yourself during your dream. Like you said, you went over and you gave somebody a hug and they had poofed and that was kind of like a way for you to determine whether you're dreaming or not. Um, I find that really kind of cool that your skepticism came through even while you were dreaming. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Dan said, like there's a lot of uh, things that happen in our brains as we're falling asleep and certain parts of our our mind are kind of going quiet and other parts are still awake and those things can be uh, influenced a lot by sleep and stress and uh, a, a host of other things and so um it's not something that everybody yeah. experiences but it's definitely something that feels unbelievably real at the time and um, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i need yeah i need a totem like like in uh you yeah know, like a in, reality check right right yes yeah i, was I don't i don't know too. <laughs> Having a reality yeah. check is smart, and I, it sounds like you already did that. Like, if it's real, then I could go over and hug this person um, or, you know, do something to remind yourself whether you're uh, awake or asleep. And it sounds like you kind of almost uh, figured it out on your own during that dream. Yeah, I did. Uh, because, you know, like a lot of people have uh, dreams that they're flying. I have that quite often. And yeah. uh, when I'm doing it, I've had it. I've had it so many times that now when I do it, I'm doing it. I know I'm dreaming because I can't fly, obviously, but I really enjoy it. And and I think that's where you said you kind of um, you 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 control your lucid dreams. I kind of control the flying one to a certain extent where yeah. I make it last longer. Like, yeah, there's a lot of. It, but I, there's a lot of um, people out that almost make a hobby out of it because there are some kind of meditative states that you can get yourself into to do it. Um, and I think that that is kind of like the goal of most people who are like avid lucid dreamer hobbyists is that they try to learn how to control their own dreams. And, and I do think it's possible. I do think that um, you tend to like, in my experience, when I was trying to get into lucid dreaming, I was really into that. I tended to, um, I think I lost more sleep than I got that whole time because <laughs> you're you're being so uh, intentional about the way that you're falling asleep because you really want to have this experience. But you do get to the point where you can kind of control it a little bit. And, and that part is really neat because it's like you're in a, a video game, but it's in your own mind. Uh, yeah. More than more than yeah. anything for me, uh, learning how to do lucid, that kind of lucid dreaming made me realize just the, po the, the uh, power of our own minds and how much... Uh, our mind can kind of create something that feels so much like reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I, I was watching the atheist experience and they, they were talking about this show and I had never really, uh, known about this show. So I figured I'd tune in and, uh, I saw the theme that you had and I thought, well, that kind of the spooky Halloween thing kind of 
kind of fits with the lucid dream that I had because it scared the shit out of me. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I just, yeah. but, the, but then, but then, I mean, when I woke up, I was sweating because I, I think, I really think yeah. uh, dream, I thought well, I could have had a heart attack. And oh, yeah. It I'm feels so up. real. Uh, so, well, th thank yeah. you for checking out our show. Uh, this is a really fun, fun uh, show where we could talk about anything, anything that involves uh, yeah. supernatural or any of that sort of thing. So thank you so much for yeah. calling us. Uh, we, I'm going to let you go. Yeah, We've so many other calls on the line tonight. It's a busy night for us here. Exactly. But thank you so much for checking, checking oh. us out and calling in. All right. Thank, yes, you much, thank you much for watching from here. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Uh, hello. We're kind of in the middle of a live show here. Uh, crew, can somebody get that? Okay. Uh, I guess I have to get that then. I guess I'm going to take you guys with me. Okay. Oh, I can't believe somebody's interrupting our show right now. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm going to have to take this room service there. Um, we're sorry. <laughs> we're we're kind of in the middle of something here. Also, um, I don't think we ordered anything. Also, I don't even have any money to give you. Oh, it's already been paid for. Okay. Um, thank you for this. But actually, you kind of look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? No, sir. I've worked here since before you were born, and I don't recognize you. All right. Well, at least I got something out of that. That was kind of. Wait, this actually, this isn't even cold. Hang on. Hey, can I get some ice for this? Hello? 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 I don't, I don't think anybody's down here. Where did that guy go? Let me see if he went this way. Oh, I don't see him this way either. Uh, hey, crew. Did you guys see, like, a dude with, like, an old-timey suit? He was holding the Coke Zero. Like, he just knocked on the door. No? Okay. Oh, well, that was weird, guys. I don't know exactly That's what's weird. going on, but this is getting pretty spooky. What is this? Hang on a second. I can't read this here. It says, in loving memory of Matthias Matt Odilla Hunter." Tragically killed in a runaway room service cart accident on All Hallows Eve, 1898. It is claimed that his spirit has been seen visiting hotel patrons, offering them popular drinks for the current time period. What the heck? All right, this is getting too spooky for me. I, I'm getting back to the room here. Jeez Louise. Okay. Oh, well, that was really weird, man. Uh, you guys saw that, right? Uh, you got picked up on the camera there. Yeah, really spooky, I, I'm huh? starting to. Yeah, this is starting to get a little bonkers. Um, th thank goodness you're the one there and not me, because I would be. My room yeah, just I don't cold. know. <laughs> um, that's probably our. That's probably our first real spooky thing happening tonight. I think nothing, nothing super spooky has happened yet. So I, I you know, if we get some more spooky stuff that happens, I, I mean, that's cool for us, right? That's what we want. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do on that, I guess. Um, but speaking of spooky stuff and evidence, I think we should talk to our next caller here. And then maybe we can see if we got some more super chats because anybody who wants to donate tonight into our super chats gets to ask us a question for our spirit board. So FYI, anybody that wants us to contact the dead here, we can do that. But for now, let's go ahead and take our next caller here. I want to talk to Micah, who is calling in from Washington. Micah, you're live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Oh, not too much. How are you? Doing good. Just trying to figure out what's going on with this hotel here. A lot of uh, scary stuff happening so far, but I see you are a paranormal investigator, sir. Yes, uh, actually it's Misha, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I've so... A, I've been a paranormal investigator. Oh, go ahead. Misha, yeah, sorry. I, I read that as Micah. Misha, uh, yes, you're, you've been a paranormal investigator, but you're also an atheist. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been a paranormal investigator for about 15 years. I started when I was a theist, and uh, right. I would remember going to investigations with the presupposition that ghosts were real. And then after leaving religion 
it's made it easier to uh, not, I would say, spoil um, any sort of uh, evidence with my own thoughts. Okay, so um, you don't think that there's good evidence for ghosts now, since you're not a believer, or, or like, what's your thoughts on that? I don't think we have any definitive proof that ghosts are real. In fact, um, what I would tell people is that if ghosts were in fact real, there would be no need for investigators anymore, because why would we investigate something that we already know? Yeah, I think that's a good point, which brings me to the question of why do you, are you still a, a paranormal investigator then, if you don't believe? Because, like, what, what, what will be the point of that? I'm still an investigator because I'm still open to the idea of finding something after death, but uh, it would be nice to find. Uh, whether or not we actually find it is, uh, you know, that, that would be something mind-blowing. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, like, I guess this brings up the question of what would constitute good evidence for the paranormal, right? Or at least ghosts in particular. I don't know what, because the paranormal, that's kind of like a big umbrella phrase. I don't know if that would include, like, goblins or something, you know, like, I, what would be in that? But, like, have <laughs> you, do you have, like, a good criteria as far as what would be good evidence I think the best thing we could do is if um, you, we could actually catch something that is a, a full-out apparition on live TV where there's no doubt that what everyone is seeing is, in fact, a ghost. But there, there's always going to be people who are going to say, oh, it's CGI or, you know, it's okay. like someone's plotting well, something, which is fair. I mean, we're we're live right here, and I may have just saw a ghost, like, just five minutes ago. So maybe that would count as I evidence. I heard that in the audio towards that yeah yeah that was yeah, that was kind of spooky so maybe maybe that's her evidence i don't know. i don't even think it would be good i mean obviously you know i may have just encountered the paranormal but like in reality what someone would have to do to fully convince me of that it's kind of weird right because if if the paranormal is supposed to be this thing that goes beyond what's capable in nature then everything that we could use to actually measure it like wouldn't make sense because it follows like the rules of nature, right? So like like me seeing something, if I see something, we know how seeing works. That's like light bouncing off of objects and like affecting the rods and cones in my eyes. So like is are ghosts interacting with nature enough to where like that interaction is happening? Or is there like some sort of signal going directly to my brain? Like it doesn't make sense. It has to interact with the natural in some way. So I wouldn't even know what good evidence for that would look like because there doesn't seem to be any like good rules for that. I don't know what you guys think. No, that makes sense to me. Like I, I have no idea. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't done any myself, so you know, I, I can only speak so mm -hmm. much, but I would have no idea if if what they claim to be uh, tools to detect the supernatural are actually detecting the supernatural. I, like I, I, I haven't done personally enough research into that, but it looks like it's just measuring some weird stuff and vague stuff and then trying to draw some kind of interpretation from that. And, and uh, I remember we had a ghost hunter on one time, a former ghost mm -hmm. hunter. And then I asked them that it's like, what makes you believe that uh, you're getting better and you're getting the correct information? Like say there is some spirit that's trying to give information to you. How are you verifying that the information they're giving to you is actually the information they're giving to you? Like, I don't know if there's a metric for how to determine if we're anywhere even close. Um, so I, I keep a very big right. skeptical eye on it, but at the same time, I, I, I can't say for sure that there isn't anything like that. We just, that so far we haven't had a good means to detect and, uh, it hasn't happened often enough for us to really, you know, it's like for a princess <clears throat> seem to matter, but I, I'm open to being proven wrong. And that's why I'm part of truth wanted. Oh yeah. Same here. Uh, like I said, all my years in the field, I, I would love to be proven wrong. Um, my biggest part in the field is I'm an audio analyst. So I work with uh, EVPs or electronic voice phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of those, I mean, it, to me, I don't know if this is a thing, but I think about pareidolia. Uh, I don't know if audible pareidolia is a thing. Yeah, it is. Like, uh, it's uh, definitely. It is. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, it is. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Ask anybody that's station. played any Beatles songs for you backwards in the last, like, 50 <laughs> years. Because, like, people, oh, people no say doubt. that there's all kinds of satanic messages and stuff in there wait helter skelter doesn't but, have any yeah, messages in it 
I thought it I think the Beatles were beyond Satan. I think they were talking to like <laughs> other deities entirely. I, it, I, it wouldn't be Satanism. They, they were, I don't know, they were doing something else for that. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. EVPs, <laughs> yeah, EVPs, it's just like that, that stuff could be, that stuff could be anything most of the time. I don't know. Anytime you see the ghost hunter shows, like obviously that's like looking at, that's like looking at a supermodel in a magazine and thinking, wow, they must look so great, but you don't know all the Photoshop that goes behind a lot of those pictures. It's the same thing with ghost hunter shows, you know, like they always put stuff in exactly. there, even though there's true hardcore believers, but like, then you have to ask questions. Well, what about like all the amateur like ghost hunters and stuff, and and all these EVPs? And honestly, like any of the stuff I've seen, I don't know about you and your investigations, but uh, personally, from what I've seen, I haven't seen anything too impressive that has maybe say, "Wow, exactly. that's definitely a, a a ghost and not like a person in the background or an animal or you know whatever it could be." Yeah. So let's keep up the good investigations. Exactly. Um, you know. So um, well, I've, we I've got with. Uh... Hey, Michelle, we, we, I, I want to keep talking to you and we'll give you some ways to keep engaging with the community, but we got a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to yeah. move on from this call. But thank you so much for calling us and giving us your insight. And uh, yeah, please, yes. we'll, we'll, yeah, no uh, near problem. the end of the show, we'll talk about some ways to keep talking with us. So let's let the conversation keep going. Yes. Thank you, Misha. Thanks have for the wonderful. call in. You too, Misha. And thank you to everybody who is calling. And we still have a couple more open lines if you guys want to come talk to us tonight as we're doing our special show, but we are at kind of our halfway point here. So now it is time to give our mid show promo. Check it out. You know, you, you mentioned those like dumbly doms that come in yeah. for the very first time and are like, Oh, I'm such a yeah. badass master. And ain't nobody yeah. buying it. Just yep. be you be humble. I personally can't exercise any demons into pigs. Or, you know, <laughs> um, heal blind folks using dirt and spit. <laughs> you you oh. know I was going to make, hey, a non-profits episode without a Monty Python reference is a non-profits episode I don't want to be a part of. Name one chemical that self-replicates. DNA. Thank you. I really appreciate your advice and the fact that I got to speak to someone that's like, I think one of the most influential people in the atheist community. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far with Dave, but he's pretty cool. Excellent. And that was our <laughs> mid-show promo, as always. Super fun. I think that's my I, favorite I've one yet. This... I, that's it's definitely fun. up there. Yeah. That's definitely up there. I, we've had a lot of really good ones, um, but yes, check out all of our other shows. And, and for a lot of you, this might be your first time watching Truth Wanted. So again, welcome if you're watching this. Um, we, You know what? I'm just going to say it. We do do this every week. This is exactly how it's like. We're going to set the expectations right here for shows like this. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep them high. Why not? Why not? Fuck it. Why not? Anyway, um, we have some uh, questions we need to ask our spirit board, I think. Yeah, so we've got just a few to emphasize, chats. again... Yeah, $20 yep. Super Chats are, are what we are looking for tonight to ask our spirit board. So if you'd like to ask a question, make sure their $20 and up is what we are doing tonight. So Aaron, what, what are some of the questions that we need to ask? We've got a few here. So the first one comes in from Jason Sherwood. He asks if the audio issues before the show were because of the spirits. <laughs> that is an interesting question. We did have some audio issues before the show. So, I mean, that's a good yes or no, too. So we don't have to spend too much time. So, again, um, we're going to switch to our, our spirit board camera as soon as the crew lets me know that we're good. Okay, so we are switched over. And you got to put your hand here, your second hand here, and your third hand at the top there, just like that. And we're going to see, uh, okay, so spirits, um, were the audio issues tonight because of you? Let's see. Okay, that's moving. Totally moving on its own here. And, oh, it says yes. It says yes. Okay, the spirits are saying that they are messing with our stuff. In fact, I would go as far as to say that every audio issue we've ever had as a production, Truth Wanted, probably spirits. <laughs> probably spirits. I would go so far yes. as to say that that's probably the case. But at least we can at least confirm tonight. We did ask them directly. So, so that's a good question to 
Yes, thanks for that one. Okay. Uh, our any next other qu questions we got? Yes, our next question yeah. coming in from WSD Revolutionary asks, does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, whoa. Okay. All right. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know how this, the spirits are going to take this Can one because eat? some of them... Do they have preferences? Well, like, did they have pizza? I'm not even sure if all of them had pizza back then, but let's see. Okay, so we're going around. Um, well, we need to ask the question first. So spirits, is pineapple okay on pizza? All right, here we go. They're going to the numbers, but that, is, that doesn't make any sense. They might be confused by this one. Um, oh, they say yes. Oh. They say yes, chat. I, I agree. Spirits say go. yes. <laughs> Spirits say pineapple is fine on pizza. Okay? And since they so agree look, with something I believe, I'm more likely to believe them. That's how epistemology works, right? That, that, that's not, yeah, like, chat. <laughs> well, you got to understand, that's not my personal opinion. That's the spirits. And as we know, the spirits are the objective definers yeah, right. of truth, at least for tonight. That, that's, right. that's how our epistemology is working. So do you so have time for, for another that. one? Um, any other super chats? Yeah. Yeah, we've got, we got one more. Yeah, coming we could in. do one more, I think. We've got one more quick one here uh, from okay, Dimitri. Uh, they ask if the spaghetti monster is omniscient. If the spaghetti, the flying one, no less. The flying, right? I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming, yeah, the flying spaghetti monster. Are, is the flying spaghetti monster omniscient? I, okay, I'm assuming it's the flying one because th that's the only spaghetti monster I know and worship. So let's ask. Uh, put your hands here, you put your right hand here, you put your other hand here, you put your third hand here, and you shake it all about. Okay, so that's that's how you get that started. Then we need to ask, okay, spirits, um, is the flying spaghetti monster omniscient? Okay, here we go. Whoa, we're going all over the place here. Okay, they're thinking about it. Uh, oh, they're saying Yes. Flying spaghetti monster is omniscient. I wonder how the spirits know that. That's kind of interesting. I guess maybe they can talk to the flying spaghetti monster. Can the flying spaghetti monster talk to spirits? I guess so, right? Anyway, I gotta put my hands off <laughs> here for right now. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I guess if somebody yeah. else is willing to ask that, maybe. Um, but uh, you know, we're we are taking those super chat donations tonight. Thank you, everybody who has donated so far to ask us questions. For our spirit board and again want to give a special thanks to our awesome executive producer greg for making this awesome spirit board with these custom uh logos on it and everything for all of our shows it is really really cool um we are going to go back to another call right now so let's take a look at who else wants to talk to us uh we have zach calling in from hawaii zach you are live on truth wanted what's up Hey, how's it? Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, thank you. What do you got for us? Um, so I figured I love Halloween, so I wanted to call you guys up and share my uh, my paranormal experience. Okay, share with us your paranormal experience, please. Okay, so one night about uh, 3 a.m., the witching hour, I guess, uh, I was driving with my girlfriend in the car. And uh, I was going down a dark road, no lights, no nothing. And right when I got to the part, it had a stone bridge. A big white blob came out in front of my car. And mm. I remember the story my father told me about all the people, he used to be a fireman, yeah? He said all the people he used to pull out of cars, wrecks, because they swerved out of the way of animals and they would hit a tree or whatever. So he said, if you ever come up on an animal, just go. So I came up on this white blob, and I remembered that, because I thought it was a domestic pig at first. So I just braced and ready to go through it. And I passed through it, and it screamed, and it hurt my ears. It was like, a And I went through it, and I pulled over, and I turned to my girlfriend, and I said, oh, baby, you seen that? And she was sleeping. She woke up, she slapped me, and she said, oh, you're so... Uh, so I didn't have her as, uh, you know, proof, yeah? yeah? Anyway, after that happened, when I went to work, I consulted the old Hawaiian ladies at work. I told them the whole story, and they told me, oh, Zachary, that was an evil spirit trying to kill you. Oh, shit. And for, okay. 
four years, that would have been my um, that would have been my strongest case for the supernatural. Okay. What, what do you, you have? A, um, stronger yeah, what, what's case your now, thoughts or? now? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a stronger case? Wait a minute. Does something else change? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, thanks to you folks, um, I no longer live in a pseudo scientific spiritual world. I started looking into uh, evolutionary, uh, you know, psychology and blind spots in our psyche and this and that. And then one day on one of you guys' shows, I heard a quote that really struck me, and that was, did you either see an event that, like, broke the laws of reality, or were you mistaken? And then that's when yeah. I realized, I think I was just tripping. <laughs> 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 I oh, mean, it's man. possible, so, but, so, the, but, so but when you're around that and you have people who validate it, like, you know, you said you had those people who's like, those are spirits trying to kill you. It, it, it seems yeah. to lend a little bit of, and especially in that community, that belief of, well, wait a second, there really are spirits here. So, yeah, I can understand where you were coming from, though. It's not completely unreasonable that you thought oh, something yeah. had happened. <laughs> like, I validate yeah. the experience. I yeah, believe that you went through real, what uh... you described. So, yeah, especially, especially oh yeah, no, when you I, have people you know, around you. I believe the night marches, everything for a long time. Okay, so so now that you, you that you don't believe that this was actually a spirit, what's your best guess as to what happened to you that day? Um, well, I don't think it was a pig anymore because the fact that I drove through it, the loud the loud scream could have been a squeal, but you know the fact that I passed through this this bright white cloud. I don't think it was a pig. I don't know. Maybe I was like nodding off at the wheel, but it seemed like even now I get the chills thinking about it. It's very, you know, realistic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I guess uh, I haven't been to Hawaii, but I hear that there are a lot of pigs everywhere. So that's, I mean, that would be a, oh, yeah, yeah. a possible I, I, explanation. I hit them on accident at night, even. Yeah. Ah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're on our side of things now, Zach, that you don't think that this was actually an evil spirit. But, like, yeah, if somebody came to me and was like, ah, not only do I think this is a spirit, I think this is an evil ancient Hawaiian spirit that's come specifically. Like, I don't know, that would raise, that, that raises some eyebrows a little bit. So that's really funny. Uh, really I'm, funny I'm that, hoping uh, to, that. you know, I'm hoping that my story also will serve as like proof that um, you folks are doing good work because I really was convinced by all this stuff my whole life. And I started listening to you guys and started questioning my beliefs and this and that and realized, uh, you know, I spent the majority of my life kind of in a dream. Yeah? And uh, probably because mm -hmm. most of the people around me are also of that uh, persuasion. Yeah? So anyway, thank yeah. you for the good work. And uh, I appreciate you guys helping uh, guys like out, uh, us out in the community and stuff. And uh Happy Halloween, huh? You have a good talking good? with us. Thank you yeah. very much, Zach. Yeah. Zach, thank you so much. Yeah, that's a great um that's a great point. Like I like the the expression, and I think I've used it myself, where it feels like you're in a dream, or at least when you talk about your past self as a believer, whether it's you know Christianity or any other kind of supernatural religious belief. I think a lot of us who are ex-believers can kind of describe our our state like that because it is kind of a totally different paradigm shift once you've left especially a community of people who also believe the same thing it does kind of feel like you've you're, you've entered another world but uh puck aaron any yeah, any other reactions on this no this absolutely makes sense to me like and 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 i remember some of my early experiences when i was still uh going to church something would happen like i would say oh i got this feeling or i got this thought and then it would be validated by a whole bunch of people at that church who say yeah that's the holy spirit talking to you right so mm. there are so many parallels between stories like what you know the ones we hear and the stories that that, that we could tell coming out of religion that's why i love truth wanted because it's not just taking the stories from the religious but showing you know what the same kind of thinking that applies to religious beliefs, there's they're also applying this poor kind of thinking to conspiracy theories, to supernatural claims. Uh, to uh, like, I really want to know more about astral projection, so let's hope somebody will call and ask about that. Uh, so the, the, but this oh, guy enjoy doing another what, knock on the door. What are you doing? What's going uh, on? Okay, all right. What? Well, I am right. going to bring you guys with me. What are we gonna get ourselves into this time? Hopefully, you get that. Coke. Ooh, what's going on in here? Oh, we're actually doing a live YouTube show here, um, but you look kind of lost. Is there something I can help you with? Ah, I thought this was my room. 
I'm in 429. Yeah. Um, are you okay? You look like there's something you need. Uh, my fiance dumped me today. You know, we were going to go home after our wedding and take a bath together. And now he's gone. But you know what? I, I, I don't even care. I'm going to go get a drink. And I'm going to take a bath if it's the last thing I do. Bye. Okay, but actually, wait. I don't think you should be walking by. All right. What the? Hello? Okay, this is getting really, really weird. I know, I know there was a woman that just talked to us here. Crew, guys, you saw this woman that was just at the door, right? You got cameras everywhere. How do you not see this? No, I'm live right now. I can't, well, okay, if you guys are drinking, that's whatever. But I, I, I can't be around this. This is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, nobody's here right now. This is just... This is just really, really weird. I'm going back to the room here. We just got a show to do. We got to keep going. Ugh, okay. Yeah, this is this is getting really, really bizarre. Okay, first it was kind of fun. We were kind of playing games. But now there's something, I think, really freaky going on here, guys. Okay, and, if there's something and, and, going on, then I'm glad we're there. If anybody's going to give this a good, thorough investigation, you can trust the team of Truth Wanted. Yeah, I hope she I, go in the I, I'm glad you guys are here with me. You know, I hope she doesn't go to the bathroom yeah, either. That I'm... would be really, really scary. Uh, I got my eyes on that on that bathroom over there. Well, you know, I've got the cameras here as well. I gotta flip that over. The crew can 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 uh, cut to this shot here. We've got that bathroom. I mean, it's 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 right over there, and you know, I've got the whole room on lock here with all of our cameras so any other you know paranormal stuff happens we've got cameras everywhere that are that are keeping us informed on the situation so thanks crew in the back i guess you know it's, I, I wish we could catch more of that stuff that just happened but didn't see we gotta anything. work with what we got okay um yeah i i don't know i don't know what's happening but um we we've That's got some weird. more people who want to talk with us so I, I think we should do that. But before we do, you know, any other super chats? Yeah, I saw yeah, one here. Um, that we got. We got one from uh, Richard Smirglia who asked, uh, who wants to ask the board if there are any spirits in the room with you. Any spirits? Well, if they answer, I mean, they already answered. Then I think they would say yes to that, right? Like I, that's what would make the most sense. It would make I the most know. sense. It would make the most sense. Let's see. Let's see what the spirits would say to it. Uh, okay, so we got our spirit cam here again. We got to put all three of your hands on, and that's how you do this. Okay, so uh, spirits, spirits, um, are are you guys? What are we asking? If they're, if they're, if in, they're the room, in the room, room, if they're with us, yes. Okay, all right, spirits, are you are you in the room with us? Okay, um, we're going around. We're going here, and um, all right. So spirits say no, no. Um, I think they're just fucking with us, though, right? Because if a spirit is saying no and they're not in the room with you, that's like if you're like, "Oh, can you hear me?" and you're doing the thing. But yeah, that's not like that's. That, I think that's what's happening here. So the spirits, they're, they're practical jokers. Okay. Dan, keep all three of your hands on there for a second. We've got another one coming oh, okay. in here. Okay, um, hang on. I gotta get my get all three of my hands here. Let me just get my hands my other quickly. hand. I thank you. Okay, we okay, got good. it. You're good. Okay, what's the next one? one? Another super chat from Swear yeah. Bro. Mm -hmm. Does the afterlife stick you with leisure activities from the era you died, or do you get the best stuff that will ever be invented? <laughs> so, do we have to do it? Okay, yes or that's no? a very long one. It is okay. No. So let's yeah, just do. Uh, will it? Will, will your activities be leisurely activities from the era that you died? Okay. 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 Or is Spirits. it just the best? Yeah. Well, yes or no up to that. Spirits, when you, when you. When you pass on, spirits, when you pass on, do you get to enjoy leisurely activities from the time that you die? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Whoa, we're going all over the place here. We're going all over the place. And, um, Orlando, oh, it's a yes. Okay, yes. so they're saying yes. 
That's okay. cool. Kind of have to take the spirit's word for it because yeah. can't really verify that. But hey, that's kind of cool. So if you had one of those like old fashioned like 40 pound vibrators or something, I guess that's the best that you get. That's the best you're ever going to get. <laughs> that's the best that you get. You don't get the new stuff, you know. Um, anyway, really interesting stuff. Um, I don't think we have any other super chats right now, do we? Or do we need to want to wait till we get to some other callers? Oh, it's, it's up to you, Dan. We, we do have another one here, but if we've okay. got calls on the line, we can take a call. Let's do one more. Let's do one more and then okay. we can take calls. We've got another super chat here from Va Vaprex. What Halloween candy is the nastiest according to spirits? <laughs> Okay. So, here what we, candy no, is now? The it's not a yes or no. This is a little more interesting. No. This is good. Okay. Open-ended yeah. questions. This is good. Okay. So yeah. we're switched back to our our camera here. Again, we've got to put all of our our hands on here. So I'm just gonna move right in here. All right. Okay, spirits. What is the nastiest Halloween candy? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I'm not even looking at the board here. It's just moving. Okay, we got to see. Here we got an A. Hey. All right, we're moving. Where are we going next, spirits? Okay, we got an N. C A N. Okay, okay we got the D. Okay, okay. We're going with and the then candy. there's the Y. The candy. Okay, candy. Well, we were talking about candy, but okay, so we got a C here. Okay, so candy C, candy C O, candy C O. Candy C O R. Oh, and then oh, it's the N. Candy corn. All right. So There's the spirits answer. don't like candy corn. Uh, personally, I, I don't mind candy corn. I, I think it's fine. But if the spirits don't like it, maybe when you pass on, you develop like a bad taste for it or something. I don't know how tasting works if you're a spirit, though. You know? Um, so kind of weird, kind of strange. Um, anyway, we are uh, going to get back to some calls here, I think, unless any other, you know, commentary from, from the peanut gallery before we move on about. No, other than I always corn. hated the, the circus peanuts more than candy corn, but that's just me. You got circus peanuts at Halloween? You know, those huge orange peanuts, marshmallows that are shaped like a peanut. You never had those? Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah, those disgusting. are gross, too. I'm they're, they're disgusting the for marshmallows. I don't think the spirits had that back in the day. I don't think I've ever had that. I don't know. Maybe we have different candy here in Canada. I, it's, I've actually never even had a candy corn I, before, so I'm just gonna have to go. I'm, I'm just gonna what? take really? the spirit. I'm just gonna take the spirit's word on that and just well, not ever try it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the spirits got some words for you, Aaron, and they're saying don't try that. So far, shit, so far. Okay? So, I mean, they like pineapple on pizza, and I'm on board with that. They're telling me candy corn's no good, so I'm just gonna go with yeah. that. I don't know. I feel like I'm trusting them based so on my personal have a lot experience. Of Spirits have a lot of things to say, a lot of things to tell us. So that's good. Um, let's go ahead and take another call here. Uh, we are talking to Queer, who is calling in from Illinois. Queer, you are live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Hey, it's actually Queer Atheist. I think the, the screener might have uh, forgot the atheist part. Oh, um, they, but, they, uh, that's okay. All, queer Atheist. Yes, you're live. What's up? First of all, there's a there's a big discrepancy on Discord about whether or not pizza actually or a pineapple belongs on pizza. I just thought you should know that uh that there's I, listen, mass, massive I understand debate. that the living have opinions, but the dead have spoken <laughs> tonight. Okay. And I'm taking the I'm just a uh, okay. journalist for the the those who have moved on and i'm telling them what they are saying so if they got a problem they got to talk to some spirits and get their own spirit board because i'm is, just i'm laying down what they're putting down you know what i'm saying so anyway you can continue this is some spirit fake news we have going spirit on fake news um, there's spirit this is look yeah. this is legit this is the most legit spirit board i've ever seen i don't know about you okay if, I anyone know, who I, wants to I really I, Anybody who really wants to want question it. my mediumship, okay, they didn't go to medium school like I did. He's got the so three hands. Where's He's your good. credentials at? <laughs> I got all three I hands. I mean, you need. thank God we have three hands, right? Anyway, I know that, like, how like we, we all should. Hands on that. How do we get our hands on that spirit board? Because I would love that. I um, think we're gonna put this thing up. As as in in the library once the library is open again because this thing is just really really cool 
Um, I, and again, it's got all the show logos on it. I would love, I don't know what we're going to do with it. So this was handmade, again, by, by one of our crew members. So it's very, very cool. But anyway, um, Queer Atheist, what, what do you got for us tonight? Well, so I wanted to ask about uh, uh, spooky apologetics. Um, okay. And uh, uh, definitely presuppositionalism, presuppositionalism um, because I feel like it's, it's, it's a really circular topic that gets brought up. Um, and just as an aside, uh, I was the one who sent you a message on, uh, Twitter or sent a Twitter, uh, tweet out saying that I had a, a, a giant crush on you and, uh, Eric Murphy. Oh. So, uh, um, okay. I didn't remember so that tweet. That was, thank you for, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. That was me. So, uh, so beware if I ever come to Texas, um, but, uh, but yeah. All right. <laughs> I think that's a threat. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll, I'm just going to roll with it. We'll, we'll keep no, going. no, no, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. I'm just saying, you know, uh, I might take you off for tequila. Um, so presuppositionalism is, is really, uh, is, is, is really hard for me to debate because it's so circular. Um, and I was wondering if you had from your street epistemology days, any, uh, any idea about the best way to, kind of have a discussion about that without it turning circular and being so frustrating. Yeah, I think the thing with um, people who use these kinds of apologetics is, you know, I, I, I want to take away the arguments from the person here for a second, because sure. I think it's easy for us to ascribe motive to people who use these kinds of arguments. And for the most part, when people kind of talk about it, like, I agree, I think there are people who want to force you into a script for the most part, at least in my experience, and, and, and who just want to kind of make you look foolish. But like besides this group of people, besides this group of people who are really pushing these apologetics, to the vast majority of people, I don't think that they're really convinced. I really think it's a small group of people. So like I, I and, and all that to say is like I don't think you have to worry about that on a day to day with people. It's only going to be these like certain kinds of apologists. And if it's only going to be these certain kinds of apologists, then I'm all right with that because my mission personally is to try to talk to as many people as I can, not just this small group who um, really is, you know, almost a novelty when it comes to apologetics, more so than any real, you know, um, there's not, not a lot of philosophical legwork being done with these kinds of arguments. In case you're not familiar with it, I'm sure most people who are listening are familiar. It's kind of this idea that you, you're using these arguments to support God because you can only know things through God or, um, you know, God um, gives us specific knowledge and we have that knowledge because of God. You know, there's different variations of this, uh, but but they all kind of run the same with these things. Um, I think Matt Dillahunt, he actually um, has talked about this at length, and I think his kind of talks on it are really good. So I would refer people to go see what he said about it. Um, I don't know if I could add much more than to say, um, when you're talking with people, you want to make sure that they're honest, especially if you're talking about to people from a street epistemology point of view. And people who are honest with themselves are usually going to be the first to say that they can't always be 100% sure of something being true. And if they do have that confidence, then they should be able to back up the reasoning for that confidence. And, you know, somebody convinced by their own reasoning that poor, I mean... And after all the conversations people have with them, I'm not sure that one extra person is going to really make the difference. You know what I'm saying? But the average person who's really honest with themselves and knows their limits about their knowledge and knows like, hey, there's only so much I can be certain about and there's only so much an argument can really take me, will be able to say, yes, there's always going to be some unknowns there. But I personally don't trust anybody that says they know for 100% certainty about anything. Um, but that, that's kind of my commentary on the whole, um, you know, the, the, those kinds of apologetics. Puck, Aaron, you guys have any thoughts on that? Aaron, what you got? Um, I, have, I haven't dealt with too many uh, presuppositionalist uh, apologists yet. But so far in my, in my limited experience, I find that obviously um, trying to get them to break out of their script a little bit because it seems like most of them do have a script that they're going with when they're talking to you. Um, and there's also usually a heavy emphasis on like these big philosophical ideas. And so for me, I, I've, I've had some success just trying to ask them, like, can you tell me more about your specific theism? And because I, yeah. I don't know, like personally, like I, 
we can talk about a lot of, of the philosophical arguments and you can get to deism and um, and that's kind of fine i guess and th th that was not as consequential as some of the other ones so i like to try to get them to break go back into what is their specific theism if they're a Christian, I try to get them to talk about Jesus and tell them why they believe in specifically Jesus or the um, the events that happened around his story. Or if it's like a, somebody who is a Muslim, I'll get them to ask about, you know, the, the story of Muhammad and more about that. Um, mostly, I think it just because it kind of breaks them back from the script. And then what Dan was saying earlier, too, about um, trying to, uh, like, connect with them on like their honesty level. I've asked an, I've asked a presuppositional presuppositionalist if they thought that I was an honest person and they, they couldn't really answer that before too. So uh, getting through to those kind of things in the communication sometimes can kind of help with that too. Yeah. And in, in my experience, presupposition is, is the presuppositional apologist is done performatively. It's yeah. done as a, a, a display because what they want to do is they want to get, they want it on camera that an atheist, says you know trips up or does something so one of the best ways to deal with it is to just say hey you know what i don't like having these conversations in like facebook messenger chat or, or facebook comments let's go have a private chat just you and me let's talk this out nine out of ten times they just disappear right there because they they know they want to do it performatively the other side of that is the presuppositional apologetic is designed to be given from the front foot right you're you're leading you're aggressive with it and you're always poking holes in your your opponent that's how they make their case and yeah. if you somehow are able to say, no, let's let's not talk about because I can be wrong and it doesn't mean you're right. So forget about me. Present your case and let's talk only about your case and then to be able to do a, a, a an internal critique. Um, and then That's I would true. also be remiss if I didn't mention the good friend of the channel, Paula Gia, has a couple of interesting videos about knowledge without God and truth without God that make it so even if there uh, even if there is no God, it is still possible to have. Yeah, then so P Puck has made a great point here in that yeah. when you're doing a street epistemology approach, it's really not about what you believe, right? Like mm -hmm. the person asking the question, it isn't really about them. And a lot of presuppositional apologetics, their whole thing is trying to make you look dumb, right? They're trying to make you seem like the rational person. But when you're coming at that, you know, uh, topic from an SC angle, you get to say, well, I want to know what you think. I right. really want to know how you got to that conclusion. And, and I want to see if I can come to that conclusion too, using that same reasoning or what kind of questions I would come up with. Um, and, 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 you know, it should be a natural conversation from there. Um, I, I don't really have a lot of stuff in the back of my pocket if I'm talking to a presuppositionalist because I really, I, I, I just want to know how they got there themselves because I, I can't seem to get there. I, I, I can't follow where they lead, so to speak. So uh, it, it, it is kind of different. But anyway, that's that's really all the time we've got for this particular call. A thank you, queer atheist, for um, calling in on that topic. I agree with you. Presuppositional apologetics is pretty spooky. So I think it does fit the theme for tonight as far as our you know spooky spooky stuff happening here let's talk uh to our next caller here and then uh we'll we'll do another round of our spirit board questions i want to talk to joe calling in from was this mississippi mi is mississippi right i should MI is this. michigan michigan gosh michigan. <laughs> anyway michigan I i'm from up. ohio so this is already I, starting off on the wrong foot but that's i've okay. never I'm, been to michigan side. I've never been to Michigan, Joe, bad. so sorry about that. I've never sent any mail to Michigan either. So anyway, Joe, you're live on Truth Wanted. Welcome to the show. How can we there help? There are actually many states that uh, have a postal abbreviation that starts with M, and it's hard to keep them all straight. So I, I forgive you for that. Thank you for being on my side. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. There's 50 anyway, of them i got to keep track of. But anyway, yeah, I'll make what's this, up? How's it going? I'll make this quick. I know you have a lot of callers. I was staying at my buddy's house for a few days once, and he lives in the woods, and he had to go work all day, so I didn't have anything to do. So I borrowed his mountain bike, and I was just cruising down all these roads and through the woods, and I was cruising down this road pretty quickly, and every once in a while, a dirt road or a driveway would intersect the road I was biking down, and as I was passing this road or long driveway, I looked over, and I saw a human figure, and it was walking in a you know stereotypical zombie type fashion, and it had this like weird long greasy hair over its face, and I would guess that the figure was maybe 20 yards away from me, 
And so I passed it and I was like, wow, that was weird. Who the hell is that? And so I turned around, I went back to that road or driveway and it, it was gone. Ooh. Now I'm a Ooh. atheist and a skeptic. So I don't believe what I saw was a ghost or a zombie, but that evening I did definitely reflect for a long time about what I may have actually saw. And mm. Tonight, you know, there's a yeah. phenomenon. Go, go ahead. Well, it's funny because like tonight is just the ghost story night. It really is. Everybody's calling in about all their stories um, from from freaky stuff that they see, which I, I really appreciate. I, I wish I had something to bring to the table, but I, I don't think I've experienced anything quite where I was like, oh, I'll never know the real answer to that, you know? So So it's really spooky, Joe, really spooky. Yeah, and what I was thinking of afterwards is, you know, I was going pretty quickly on my bike and the amount of time I was actually looking at it was probably less than five seconds. And there's mm. the phenomenon of people looking at clouds and seeing faces or shapes, things like that. And I was wondering, you know, maybe the light was going through the trees in a certain way and maybe I saw something and just the two seconds that my eyes were pointed in that direction, my brain just presented, you know, my eyes presented to my brain what appeared to be a, a human figure or a zombie figure. And if I was the type yeah. of person who did believe in ghosts or the paranormal, I probably would have really clung to that interpretation. And perhaps even to this day, I would be going around telling all my friends, like, I saw a ghost once. No, for example, earlier you had a caller that talked about sleep paralysis. A very good friend of mine uh, is a theist and not a skeptic. And she once told me a story about how she woke up in the middle of the night and there was something heavy on her chest and it, it was a demon attacking her. And that was just mm -hmm. textbook, textbook sleep paralysis. Yeah. And I tried to explain that to her, but, you know, as, as, as you hosts know, it's uh, you, it's hard to convince someone of a skeptical point of view once they have their mind set on a, yeah. a paranormal explanation. It's true. It's true. And when you don't have the anyway, tools to really figure that out and, and you don't have that background, it makes it extra difficult too, Joe. But yeah, I, I agree with you in that it's probably just your mind playing tricks on you. Pareidolia is the phenomenon of kind of seeing things or faces that aren't actually there um, with things. And, and, and if you only have just a couple seconds to look at something, you're probably not fully processing what's going on, especially if it's just in the corner of your eye. So uh, I'm glad that we're both on the same page there. Otherwise, it sounds like you're living in Silent Hill, and I would suggest that you move if you do live in Silent Hill, because <laughs> Silent Hill is not a great place yeah. to be um, in general. But um, Joe, we are we are cut it close to the end of our program tonight. So I, I'm going to have to go ahead and let you go with that. Hopefully, I know it was kind of a short response, but thank you so much for um, giving your uh, call tonight. And uh, we want to ramp things up here with with our awesome, awesome uh, spirit board phenomenon happening here. So uh, any other super chats? Yeah, we have one last super question here. We have one last question, and then we can uh, uh, go to something else. We have here uh, the question. Ryan Stelick asks, this kind of vague, uh, what is a good length in inches? What is what is a good length? What is a good length like in the, inches? In inches, like and I a, guess is a good way to make sure that the ghosts are not using the metric system. <laughs> okay, what is a good length in inches? That um, is the we question ask, verbatim. Yes. We'll, we'll we'll ask our spirit board this, so everybody knows we got to put three hands: one, two, and then three. We've all got our three hands yeah. on the spirit board here. Um, okay, um, I guess I'll just go ahead and ask. Um, spirit board, what is a good length in inches? Okay, so we got a four, two, zero. Hey, 420, <laughs> baby. That's a good length in inches. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We got some more numbers here. Six and a nine. Okay, 69, 420 and 69 are both good lengths in inches. Yep, that's all the spirits have to tell us on that one. So thank you, spirits, for the the good length in inches there, 420 and 69. All right. Well, I guess uh, that is all of the 
uh, spirit board questions that we got. Unless we got one more spirit board question. It looks right. like we do. We do have one okay. more. Yeah. All right. Aaron, you want to take it? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, so our last question of the night is, was, um, it's from a super chat from RB. Was that a subtle announcement of Matt and Arden's engagement? What was a uh, what? What's what are they talking about? <laughs> I don't know what they're talking I don't about. Know what, that I, is I, that's again verbatim. Yeah, we have no all idea. I saw were uh, this 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 distraught hmm. woman in the hallway who needed to have, she wanted to have a bath. I I, I don't remember anything oh, else. Are are they talking about? Oh, you know, now that I'm thinking, that guy they, they kind of did look like. But his I name was Matthias. Would, was Matthias how, Delahunt, uh, Is Delahunt that possibly he, because we're Delahunt. preconditioned to think about our friends? That's when right. We're yeah. Them? I, I was don't know. make a comment about that I, earlier, I Puck, sure. about how our, you know, it, when we have like a whole framework and the things that we're used okay. to, right. lots of different events can be interpreted in a way to confirm our our kind of current situation. Right. So, so not let's sure. not jump to let's hasty jump conclusions, to conclusions about what we think we saw. <laughs> we'll go to the tape later. Okay. Um, yeah. So Arden and okay. So okay. What, this is gonna be a weird question to ask them because was again, that, that was clearly an, another man and and in a different woman okay was this okay let, let, let's put the spirit can on thank you for that okay we're gonna put our hands on here um was that oh <laughs> there, there's the hand sorry it takes a little bit to get over there um uh come on i gotta put my hand on here there we go there we go okay um was that what, what, what were the events spirits were the events that happened tonight a subtle announcement for matt and arden's engagement okay all right, we are moving. We are moving. Oh, it says goodbye. Oh. It says are we well, keeping us in Oh, suspicion. okay. Well, <laughs> are we just are they? Okay? Uh, that's goodbye. it. It's not moving. I'm trying to move it. It's not going anywhere. So, huh. okay. Well, I think I think that's it. I think goodbye the spirits okay. um, didn't want to talk to us anymore on that one. Um, well, I, I, thank you, spirits. Thanks for talking to us, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's that's a bit of uh, interesting. Yeah, a weird coincidence though. Weird coincidence though that those two people did happen to look like people that we know, don't you think? That's Very pareidolia. And actually, a, a, a little, yeah. a little. It might be a little. Yeah. Compromi yeah confirmation. Confirmation bias. Know. I would think. Yeah. I I gotta go look at the footage later. I think may, maybe my 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 cell phone camera. We got some footage on there. But um, Aaron and Puck, if you guys could go ahead and and give us some outro stuff for tonight, um, and then I'll well, I will sign us off here, and, and and you know we can be on our way. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you very much for letting us invade Sunday nights. This is usually the uh, purview of a talkie than an atheist experience, and now this is uh, me and Aaron's uh, Sunday show debut. So thank you very much for, for uh, letting us be part of your Sunday lives. Um, and if you enjoyed the show and you want to keep talking to us, one of the best ways is just to email us at truth at atheist-community.org. Um, if you want to, if you like the show and you like what we do here, consider joining our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash truth wanted. Uh, you can watch, uh, if you've already a big fan of the ACA shows, uh, just go to the one-stop shop for all ACA shows. Go to tiny.cc slash AEN podcast for all your favorite uh, Atheist Community of Austin shows. Uh, watch back episodes of Truth Wanted and Atheist Experience and all the other great shows, even some that you might not have even heard of yet. Um, Let's see. You can uh, one of the easiest ways to support us is to go ahead and subscribe to this channel, or you can even join the channel for as little as ninety nine cents. You too can post objectively Dan's likeness in as many different chats as you want to. Um, let's see. We can also join our Facebook fan groups uh, just by going to uh, tiny.cc slash. Uh, forgot what is it? <laughs> the crew's going to put it up here, and there it goes. Tiny.cc slash fbtwg. I lurk that group every day. I love seeing what you guys come up with. If you have any videos you want us to take a look at or articles you want us to take a look at, that's a great place to put it for us to look over. Um, you can. Uh, we're going to be on uh, Discord, so you can uh, go to the. Uh, Atheist Community of Discord at tiny.cc slash ACD Discord. I'm a big lurker over there. So if you uh, want to keep going, talking with us, take it over there. And I would also be, let's see, we got some fantastic merch 
also so go to tiny.cc slash a uh, merch aca i have a truth wanted mask i wear it all over the place and nobody looks at me all that funny and finally thank you very much to the crew that's uh, helped us uh with put everything together and make it so all we have to do is worry about looking as good as we do there we are check everybody out that's not spooky in the slightest okay oh weird <laughs> <laughs> that's great and uh yeah so thank you all very much for once again for letting us be part of your sunday yeah Thank you so much, Dan. Back to you. All right, everybody. Well, my name is Objectively Dan. This has been a very special episode of Truth Wanted. Remember to always keep wanting the truth. Um, hello? Uh, hey, crew, what's going on? Guys, what is this? What the heck? Dan? What is that? Dan. Dan. No. Excuse me. This? Hello? This? No, don't touch it. Oh, shit. Dan. Dan. What, what, what happened? Okay. Okay, we're done. We're done. Cut this off. Cut yeah, this no, off. No, we got to no. figure out what happened. That wasn't part of it. That wasn't part of it. Look. We're done. We're done. We're done. Good. Um, okay. uh, what, what do you got? Can, can you get 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 someone on on Twitter or somebody? Okay, just give me a second. I'm just gonna, I'm the gonna the try to text Dan. That was definitely that was just part of it. Was anybody? That was a plan, right? I did, I, I didn't know. Okay, just somebody just get eyes on Dan. Who was in that room? Yeah, no, no I think we're off now. It's okay. Um, I'm just gonna try to give him a call. I don't know. Oh, okay. Find Greg. Find Bert. I I don't really care who. Just get someone on the horn who's gonna help us out. He's not answering me. He's not answering my call. I got nothing. I got nothing. Just okay. That, that... All right. All right. Let's just let's Did you just... try text. Did you try texting him? I, I'm getting no response. Watch I've got the nothing. nonprofits and join the hosts in the live chat Sundays at 3 p.m. Central between the Atheist Experience and okay, Talk sure Heathen. Visit tiny.cc/ytnp.